My name is Ron Shedd. I'm a member of the Youngstown City School Board. Actually, I'm the president. Um, I'm going to share with you a story of my life that technically, I, I've never spoke, I've never really uh, spoke about this before publicly. Um, only one other time I can recall, and that was when I was in college. I wrote a, um, I wrote, it was for public speaking. And we were talking about, uh, I wrote a story anyway, well, not a story, but I just told the truth about my life experience. And um, what, happened, what happened to my family was that my father was murdered when I was 10 years old. And with, with, I never even heard of someone being murdered before. You know, the only time I, I, I see like that kind of violence or something like that was like if it was J.R. Ewing got shot on Dallas or something, you know? Like something just like beyond that, you know? And at 10 years old, I was the only child that, that I knew of in my school that they had a parent that not only was dead, but dead because of gun violence. And it was, uh, it was, it was just traumatizing. Just the, the whole event, when I think about it now, like I didn't, I didn't prepare anything today, but I'm just speaking from my heart and telling you what this event was for me. You know, I remember uh, uh, Officer uh, Rick Ally at that time coming to the home, doing crime, uh, doing the inf getting the information for Crime Stoppers. I remember during that time period, just if I was watching TV after school, that video coming up and, you know, and being constantly reminded that the individual or individuals that murdered my father never got, never, we never got justice for that. You know, that, that happened, that was something we had to live with that, not to mention, not even understanding why this particular event even happened. As a child, not knowing if, are they coming for me next? What did I do to cause this? What, what, am I, will I ever be safe? That trauma there. That trauma that, lead, that, that just grows with you, that goes with you throughout your whole walk, through playing sports. You know, I, I was actually playing for the Northside Knights at that time, and I remember like when I came back to practice after it happened, it was just a, just a, like a, a eerie kind of feeling, like nobody really knew how to handle it, you know? So like, like I, and I remember this, I told you this is only my second time talking about this, and I'm of a certain age now. But the, 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 the point I'm saying is, is that often as children, we don't have the opportunity to be able to talk about the trauma that we experience. And sometimes the adults in our life don't have maybe the resources or, or skills to understand that that needs to happen. So we're not just growing up, there's certain things that my father will never, you know, if, you know up in heaven looking down, but for me, the experience with him, me, graduate from high school, graduate with, with a bachelor's degree, graduate with a master's degree, running for public office, wanting a better life for our, for our students, and understanding that the trauma that's in our city and how it impacts students, the, those sorts of things. Like, even seeing my own son, I, he has grandchildren that will never know him. Even standing here today, it's hard, I was just thinking about this, it's kind of hard for me to even remember his voice. You know, so, so, I'm, I, I, so I have a few messages out there. It's just one of those messages is we, we have to, if, if we have families that are facing this type of trauma, we have to reach out to them. We have to have those conversations with them. We have to give those children an opportunity to be able to speak about that situation. And, you know, even though I had a loving family around me, my truth was never revealed, you know, I never had that opportunity to now. And I just want to, you know, thank uh, Mayor, Mayor uh, Tito Brown for having this event today in, uh, and, the, uh, and the ceasefire group, you know, because it, it's given me a chance to really say my truth because I didn't have this opportunity, you know. And it, and it's, and it, and it was something I felt like didn't define me. That was one thing I said, oh, like that happened, but it didn't define me. But, but really it, it did, you know? It, it's, right now it's giving me a chance to be courageous and to share my story with other people who have been hurt in the same way. You know, I, I just didn't, <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to hold back the lump in your throat. I mean, even after years, 
decades of that loss, decades of, of, of not having that experience, of not, you know, and then being a father myself and saying to myself, well, you know, if, if my father was, was there past this particular time frame, I would have, I would know how to talk to a kid about, you know, hey, you're 13 now and that sort of thing. Oh, you're going off to college, this is what you need to be prepared to do. Oh, you need a couple bucks for, for gas or something. Like these are all things that like, for me to become a father, I manufactured those things off of the love that I, that I received from people around me. But how much more powerful would that have been if my father was there to help guide me, to help guide my grand, my, his grandson, who's by the way doing well, and he's a college graduate as well. And um, you know, that, that's, just the, that's just the thing, that even when these terrible things happen in our families and in our communities, you can still do the things that you need to do to be successful. You can still defy the odds. They say, Ron, is it, it, it's people who tell me, you shouldn't be in the situation that you're in because you're from Youngstown, you were raised in poverty, your, your father was murdered, you've seen all of these particular things, a lot of things I didn't talk about today. But the thing is, is that we have to encourage our, our children to have that stick to and that resilience. Just look at the, they already have the resilience. They just need that, that, that pathway. They just need people to understand what that trauma looks like. You know, so I'm glad I had an opportunity today to speak to those, to, to give you an idea of what a child may feel like when they're going through that particular, when they're going through this. It, it's not easy and, and, and they need your help. Those, those families need your help. And, and it's just, it, it, can, it can really make a world of difference to, to just to know that we all play a part in making someone's lives better, especially after such a traumatic event. Thank you for your time.